Welcome, everybody, to the Mobile Plus Network podcast for the week starting the 25th of May. Um, today, we're covering many news items from WMPowerZ.com, Cadage Arena, and also from Microsoft News. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Saru. I'm the editor-in-chief at WMPowerZ.com. Um, Mehendi. Hi. And uh, we also have Michael here. Michael's our feature editor. Hi. And today, we've got quite a few news items to cover. Michael, why don't you start us off? All right, today um, we're starting off with the leaks of the um, Lumia 940 benchmarks, the Lumia 840, and the curved Windows Phone part leaks. So earlier on graphics on GFX Bench, um, the Lumia, a new device which we think is the Lumia 940 was spotted um, was was spotted earlier this week with, an, with a QHD screen and three gig, three gig of RAM. And what, what do you guys think think about it? The leak. That is what? Well, well, the, uh, that, that leak is, was quite controversial in that the specs said one thing, and of course, our article alluded to something slightly different, you know. Um, but GFX Bench, uh, you know, said, um, detail said that it had a, a, a full HD screen, whereas, of course, the leaks say it's a 2K screen. And, um, and it also said 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the leaks say 3 gigabytes of RAM. What now, that, no, that's the, that's, yeah. It, it's, yeah. A free, uh, it's a free RAM, so it won't show, the, it won't reflect the, um, the full sure. amount of RAM available. But yeah. I think that's just that's something our readers really didn't understand or appreciate. Yeah, and another thing is Microsoft should just, uh, should just put 4, four gigabyte RAM, because they're launching it like late 2015, so they should already start preparing for 2016. Well, there's a problem with that in that um, Windows for ARM has always been 32 gigabytes. And no, I mean 3 gigabytes. I don't thought say 32 bits. No, no, what I mean is Windows for ARM has always been 32 bits. It's not been a 64-bit operating system. And and that means that it can't address more than 3 gigabytes of RAM. And, uh, you know, 4 gigabytes would just be wasted. Um, and um, Even the, the Surface 1 and 2 and the Linux and 20, they don't have more than 2 gigabytes of RAM. And they ran on Windows RT, which was basically for Windows, but on ARM. So, yeah, really, I think this is a case of specs for specs, um, you know, fake, really. Also, uh, apps are required to only use a certain amount of RAM. You know, if I use uh, excessive amounts, they don't get certified. And, and, and so, again, it's very difficult to, to actually make use of a huge amount of RAM. And, and Windows Phone is only going to keep so much in the background in any case. Also, do, um, do you guys think it should be like the Lumia 940 or something else, like the Lumia icon, the name? Uh, the L- Lumia icon, okay, names and numbers are different. The name doesn't tell you exactly what it is, it's just like, oh, um, this, um, like the Galaxy Ace, the Galaxy S, whatever, you really don't, you don't know where it stands in relation yeah. to uh, other, other products. It's only, um, like the Lumia icon it could be, it could be the top, it could be the bottom. We have no idea, it gives no, no context. Well, 940. All you have to do is know, okay, the five, 5 is the bottom and 9 is the top. Then you just, just go for the 9, nine every time. Then what about the Lumia oh, 1320? Sorry, the what? Uh, Lumia 1320, the tablet. I mean, the tablet. Well, it, it was the, a tablet, the 1320, right? the yeah. yeah. That was a one-time thing, and it's been, they've taken that off with the 640XL because it makes no sense for... Uh, I think for Lumia 940 sounds bad, and they should just get a name like Lumia Icon. Well, you know, I, I, I agree. I agree with Michael. I, I think that you know, a lot of people complain there's no rhyme or reason or purpose in these numbers, and they're not they're not meaningful. But for people who are used to this ecosystem, there's a lot of meaning in it. We know a four series is less than a five series, and a nine series is is, is ahead of a, a seven series. Um, and we know that the next number is is a generation. So, so you know, it, it does make a lot of sense to me, right off. And we know the last number is a minor version. It's like saying, getting rid of application versions or operating system version, build numbers. You know, we we understand what it means, and and maybe outsiders find it confusing. But the people inside the industry, we we know exactly what the numbers mean, and and it's, it's very clear just at glancing it what an 840 and a 940 means. It's better than 830, and a 940 is better than a 930. 
And I'm speaking of which, um, I, like other ecosystems, like for, for the iPhone, for example, what, what, what's an iPhone? What's One gigabyte that? RAM. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It, it, it reminds me of this whole controversy every time Microsoft releases a, a new operating system and they complain there's seven different SK, SKUs. And, and the next web. That is so ridiculous. You, you, consumers can only buy Pro and Home. I'm pretty well, sure. There's only two. Yeah. Oh, it's, that, it's actually, that article was dumb. But, and there's so many of them. He has repeated all the time and even Microsoft uh, commentators like Paul Therat complain about it. But, you know, when you're in education and you want to buy uh, the operating system for education, you buy Windows for education. It is so clear cut. Exactly. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and some users are also complaining about the size, the display size for the Lumen 940. Ah, uh, yeah. Five inches. Five inches are apparently too big. Well, to be fair, five inches is a bit big. I prefer no, like, the size of the 735. Uh, it's smaller. It's more compact. Not really. And the 640 and the 830 and the... Uh, it's actually big, which reaches to the top. And then Windows 10 Mobile, where you have to reach to the top for every single thing you want to do, that's a bit of an issue. But I don't think um, uh, 5 inches is too big, because my L6 is uh, 5.1, and it's still too small, I think. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let's move to the new curved screen leak. Um, so earlier this week, um, wow. earlier this week, um, the editor of Nowhere... Also, the FR leaked um, a screenshot, not a picture of a curved, n- n- old Nokia device on Twitter, apparently. And yeah, some some think it might be um, it might be a part for the new um, devices coming in the, in the summer. Uh, what do you guys think? First thing I would say, I think is fake. <laughs> Why? Because the guy has a tendency of uh, posting fake stuff. That's right. not true. He's, he's, he's got he's got a list of uh, of stories in which he was first and in which he was right, and it's about um, 15, yeah, 20 15. articles long. <laughs> and the only one he was wrong on was the um, Lumia 940 leak, which was very obviously quite plainly obviously wrong and false to anyone who looked at it for like five seconds. Yeah, but but then again, I guess people do troll him, so you, you do never know, isn't it? But I mean, it's interesting that that screen, um, Windows Block Italia, they, um, they noticed that that screen bears some resemblance to a device which was leaked at the end of last year. Which and, 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 uh, but then, you know, we, we didn't know devices have a very long lead time. So, so who knows really? C- curved screens are, are quite a, a, a normal feature of Nokia's design language. I don't think it actually means that, you know, anything, um, it, it, it's not going to be a, a Windows Phone version of the uh, Samsung Galaxy Edge. It's just uh, it's just a decorative, as far as I, I suspect. Yeah, and even the 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 920 had the curved screen, the six sorry the um, the 930 has curved screen, the 625 had the curved curved black screen. So the screens always curved. It's a thing that happens. Yeah, I don't think it's meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just learning how to pronounce a uh, geom. Um, Show me, show me. <laughs> BBC News has an article on it. How to say show me? Show me my four. Show me me four. Show me my four. M I four. M I four. M I five. M I six. Show me my four is getting okay, uh, to the next. M. To the next so. story. Uh, Lumia eight forty was spotted at a export website. There's not much yeah. new info on it just yet, but. It was coming, really I think. Important. It was just like a really bit of fabric. So we don't know what it's called. It could be the 840XL, the 740XL. Yeah, but Nokia Power user previously reported um, the 5.2 inch is the Lumia 840, not the XL. So it could be the, five, uh, um, the normal one, or could be the XL one. The Zuba was 5.7 inches, so that is definitely not a normal size. Any. I, th- I think what, what, another way of, 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 of knowing whether it's a high-end or low-end handset is looking at the value of the import, and it's uh, each each unit is um, nearly forty thousand uh, Indian rupees. In, Indian rupees. Um, how much uh, is pounds? I can. I'm that's, that's nearly two hundred and fifty dollars, I think. No, I think it's even it's even more than that. 
Let me That's we're talking nine nine thirty level. So it links towards um so it's towards uh the mid range then. So it could be seven it could be a seven X X or an eight X X. So that's so four hundred and ten pounds. That's four hundred and ten okay, pounds. So, Alright, so it, okay, so it's a it's an eight or a nine. It's definitely not a seven or no seven. Or even uh yeah. So it's a yeah, towards a high end, uh, eight forty, nine forty level level device. Yeah. It's expensive. Right? It's actually it's the cost price. It's not it's not retail price. This is the cost price of the handset. And uh, I think we're looking at the highest end. Uh, maybe this is 940 XL. Could be. Could be. When you, when you put it that way, okay? because the cost and the specs and how they all match up to various leaks, seems likely, I would say. Mm-hmm. Well, now we know it's, it's almost also available in DualSim. I think the first high end DualSim Windows phone. Yeah. That actually, I think the 920, I think it was a 920 door sim button, was there or was there not? No, well, not that I can well, do. Actually mixing up, um, phone across companies. <laughs> That's where the number system breaks down, doesn't it? <laughs> well, no, it's not. I was thinking of, of, of high end phones which had door sim, door sim versions of them. Cause okay. I, I, I know the Samsung actually had, had a door sim version. So the 920 T in China, get, get, get one of four, I'm not quite sure. I remember. Well, you know where the SIM goes in? The 920 had, had a very small SIM slot at the top of a device. I, I, I wouldn't know where they would fit in another SIM slot. Oh, that's true. That's true. I don't yeah. think they did. Definitely wouldn't. It would have to be below the battery, and the, the 920 didn't have a removable battery. Yeah, I don't think any, any of the, the flagships would have in that case, because they're all, they're all um, embedded. They're all, um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Unibody. But then, of course, we've heard the rumor is that... Um, the new generation of high-end window phones will have removable backs. Like the 8000? And I think that makes a, a dual sum a lot, um, lot plausible. more viable. Yeah, plausible. So I don't use dual sim to be fair, I just use single sim. Yes, uh, people in... I guess people in a um, country like India or China would... Yeah, they use, use them. dual sims a lot. Okay, so now that we've changed our mind about the story, are we going to change the headline? Speaking of China and stuff... Um, the Xiaomi Mi4, Mi4, whatever it's called, I'll be getting a Windows 7 launch this week, I, according to. I hope my, I hope Microsoft launches it for like all Android phones. Why? Well, um, yes, because that gives everything away to Android. Literally everything, even the OS as well. Sorry. I mean, because because Microsoft should give should give everything about Windows 7 to Android, Android phones, <laughs> even the OS itself. Might as well just like. So, no, there you go. Technically, if you install Windows 10 on it, it's not Android anymore, is it? It's just a smartphone running Windows 10. <laughs> it, I, wonder if, I wonder if you, if you could like change if you could change it back, or if it's a one-time thing. Like you get Windows and just it's you stuck yeah. with Windows forever. Yeah, that's it. You can do it. You just you you blessed with Windows Phone forever. You just root your phone, you flash Windows 10 on it, and that's it. You can have it for like life forever. I mean, I wonder uh, if flashing your phone to Windows 10 automatically like, makes it a Windows phone, which means you cannot reverse the process because of the, how Windows phone is um, built. Well, no, once, you go, once, once, once you go, once you go Windows phone, you never go back. You know, everyone, everyone knows that. Yeah. Oh, not even Snapchat, of course. <laughs> In which case, you go running back. Okay. Quick. But but you know, I I think it's 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 um you know this is under the new device section, and there's a reason for that. By offering Windows Phone on other high-end devices, it gives Windows Phone fans another route to getting high-end Windows phones, isn't it? If you know, we have um, 30 odd OEMs and we have like three high-end Windows phones, I don't think that that, that works out. It hasn't worked out yet. Well, but the, the HTC uh, M8 is, is quite a high-end device, and and if it wasn't for the M8, we, you know, we wouldn't have any. Um, any high-end new Windows phones a whole lot this year? Actually, we don't because we're you not know, the US. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I don't care. It doesn't count. That, that's why it falls down. But still. <laughs> I mean, if, if Xiaomi launches the phone in the United Kingdom, I'd rather get this rather than getting the Lumia 940. Yeah, I'd rather not get a phone that um, a Chinese phone because of like the warranty and stuff. Um, if you get a Lumia, at least at least you can be sure that if it breaks down, 
you can just um, call Microsoft or whatever and they get, get your new one, get warranty. But for a Chinese phone, you like if if it breaks down, you're shit out of luck. But still, though, it's a good phone. But you can just buy another one then for the same price. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, I don't I don't buy phones every week. Actually, never mind. Let's just no, agree to that. You, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you do. <laughs> I thought you do. You buy phones every day. <laughs> Actually, month. Same thing. Whatever. So, so anyway, mo- moving on. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to talk about Windows 10 now. Uh. The first on our agenda is um the five one two megabyte restrictions um five one two megabyte of RAM restrictions that were um leaked earlier this week. This is um, by uh, our friends uh, at at Windows Mania in in Poland, and and yeah. they often have, have insider in access to um things like schematics or new builds of the operating system. I think they they must have some contacts with um the uh, maintenance like departments for for Windows Phone. And we sent us this document, which included lots of detail about what how Windows 10 will run on a 512 megabyte device. And I must say, there was a lot of skepticism for some strange reason regarding regarding this information. Often people are saying this only applies. This is Windows Phone 8.1. Um, you know, I I still like to see the 512 megabyte Windows Phone 8 device that can do HDR and video HDR um, pictures. No, that's just ridiculous. This is clearly Windows 10 related. Well, though, I'm and, sure um, some apps do, some third-party apps do offer HDR um, for um, lower-level Windows phones. I think um, I think Camera 360 site does. It does HDR for um, the 625 and phones like that. Sure, but that's by taking individual pictures and and and, and yeah. putting them together. Rather, this is this is referring to. The built-in software, and we know from earlier leaks of Windows 10 de- um, device development documentation that OEMs can um, adjust this built-in camera software. They can, you know, they well, can yeah, make um, such settings. Well, yeah, they can. Because I remember, like, at um, MWC, I looked at different um, camera apps, different like, Microsoft mm-hmm. camera apps on different phones, and they were all they all had different settings. Some had filters. Some had um, some allowed you to customize the um, the fi- um, some other things in them that weren't on the that weren't found in Lumia phones. So it's exactly and right now you can already change the difference the camera app already. Sure. So anyway, so this documentation is clearly from the same kind of um, resource, um, and it, it notes that if you have a 512 megabyte device, you can expect your handset to work somewhat less reliably. Um, you can still take part in most scenarios. But you might find that, that um, for example, your voice over IP phone call uh, um, might crash, for example, unexpectedly because you're running a, a higher demand resource application in the foreground. Or, or you might find that your, your, your GPS app that's tracking you in the background might suddenly quit for the same reason. Or, or again, for the HDR uh, pictures thing, you might find your picture that your camera doesn't take as good HDR because it's only taking three shots with different exposures rather than five shots with different exposures. But I, I think overall, I, and what many of our readers have said is that, you know, you buy a cheap Windows phone, you know, this is what you expect. It will work. You'll get what you pay for. Which is why I don't. I, which is why I don't. Because, honestly, they're crap. Well, not crap, but they're cheap. And crap. Although I, I, I do blame myself. The, the six... The six 30 range should never have had 512 megabytes of RAM. That really that doesn't make sense. Well, that was awful. Well, actually, the entire phone is awful, and it's best if you forget about it. Like, just like the 530, you just forget it exists and move on. <laughs> you know, it, it's a beautiful device. It, when you see it in stores, it, it really looks very, very nice. And, and I think that's one of the reasons it really sells really well. But I'm not sure how well it works in practice, but it's a, it's a very, very beautiful handset. Well, the, sc- um, the screen's awful. The it lags horribly. I couldn't wait to get to sell it when I got had it for a few weeks. Um, the 640 has the same design and it works well. So yeah, take for that what, yeah. what you will. And, and there's many, there's many who say that um, these devices were developed in the waning days of Nokia, and and Nokia basically shortchanged them. You know, they they tried to make these devices as cheap as possible. Their strategy was releasing. Cheap handsets for volume, 
and 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 they really underspect these devices for that reason. Yes, but Microsoft continued the trend with um, the 45, the 430, the 532. I mean, they didn't change it, and the 535 with its horrible screen issues. Sure, but the, the 540, you know, finally, you know, changed direction, and, and then a 5, 435 and so forth. And we haven't had the 512 megabyte uh, RAM device since then. So, so that's good, really. Yeah. Um. So. Next, we're talking about Samsung and Continuum. And Samsung um, is doing a patent for the own version of Continuum where we're using Android for and you plug it into a, um, a shell, but the shell actually runs Windows, so it's a bit confusing. So why don't they just put the Windows 10 on the phone? Well, the answer okay. is simple. Apps and TouchWiz. Samsung likes TouchWiz to, dif- to dif- differentiate them from other... Um, Manufacturers, even the even the skin of Android, even the um, on OS has the, the touch which is aesthetic. So they have to like um, differentiate themselves from other people. When you can't do that on Windows, even with the native native suite of apps. You, Samsung should just uh, kill TouchWiz to get more sales. Like TouchWiz is just stupid. They aren't exactly begging for sales right now. So <laughs> yeah. they're, they're struggling, so they should just kill TouchWiz. Oh, that's struggling. They're, having... they're struggling. they're struggling at selling only 80 million phones. Yeah, they're, they're struggling that's compared that. to Apple. So, no, actually, they're actually something uh, is still but, the top. But you know, TouchWiz was their attempt to copy Apple, and it was incredibly successful, actually. Yeah, but then and it still fell. is. Yeah. <laughs> they aren't struggling by any means of the imagination. Struggling would be being HTC and making the HTC One. In, in over, fact, you, you have to wonder. Stuff. Are there profitability issues because they're moving away from TouchWiz? Sometimes when you listen to the critics, you're not listening to your customers. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Verge who talk about um, hasting on the Samsung Galaxy, whatever, and they all use iPhones and they don't even know what the what the Google apps look like, even after watching a PowerPoint of them for two hours. <laughs> that, that was, what should I say? That was just stupid. embarrassing. We'd, we'd have a, include a new section of the podcast, uh, I Verge Complaints. <laughs> how, not, how not to review an app. <laughs> you can zoom into things. Did you know that? You can play videos. You it's magical. Play... But look, you can zoom into things. That's magical. It's got grids. It's like an <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> anyway, but uh, getting back to the story, um, this is a, just a patent. We don't know if it will turn into a real device. What we do know is that Windows 10 is specifically designed to make this um, to make this feature uh, very easy possible. to do and possible. Yeah, in fact, it's an integral part of the operating system. And um, I think with Windows Phone and Microsoft really, really, um, you know, leaning into productivity, uh, this should be a product which Samsung should release, maybe just with Windows Phone. And it will boost Samsung's enterprise sales. It will boost Windows Phone. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft has worked with Samsung. We do have some influence with them. And, we, we, and we'll see something like this released uh, for Windows Phone. That's true. Because for enterprise sales to be boosted, you would have to have enterprise apps as well. Um, Microsoft would have to work with developers to, um, to create enterprise apps. And so far, they haven't been doing that as of lately. What well, kind of we, we saw Cisco's VPN app arrive recently, so so we know you know these things are, are arriving, and and also um, often enterprises use use vertical apps. They don't necessarily use the same apps as, as everyone else. They develop their own apps, and yeah. developers working in enterprise are often very familiar with Microsoft tools like .NET and so forth. C-Sharp so and stuff. yeah, and Microsoft also has a variety of tools available to to port these. Uh, to turn these developer, these internal developer apps into universal apps. Speaking of universal apps, um, the new universal maps apps may include um, speed camera alerts, which yeah. is a very cool feature for people who drive, unlike me. Um, so, what do you think? What do you think of it? Is it would it be like here maps or Google Maps or just um, a gimmick in well, practice? Well, well, this is a feature that we noticed uh, from the, the recent release of the desktop version of the operating system. But it included these, these APIs, which are clearly only useful on, on a mobile version. And we know it is a, a unified operating system of sorts. 
So it it will very likely show up on the um, in the mobile app. I think the biggest issue really with that is how up to date will the information be, and will the app include allow users to to, to you know nominate a location or submit a location as having a new speed camera. So you know while we know the app has the potential for showing these alerts, I, I do wonder how good the implementation will be. But you know if the year map it just hasn't got it at all. So. That's interesting. But and to use this app, you need to have Windows 10 Mobile. And speaking of that, we have to wait um, about a bit of a, a while for the next build. Um, the new build right now is a bit unstable. It's crashy, it's buggy, the soft screen doesn't work. And um, at this rate, at the rate of, the, at the, rate of, the, of how they've been, they've been making new builds, it might have to be till late, late June, late mid-June for the next release. In fact, I just got some information from uh, Windows Mania that there's a new build out um, from the 10th. It's, it's built 10127, which is uh, uh, in about 50 builds above what, what's been released already. And apparently it's so unstable, you can't even get past the, uh, oh, lock past the start screen. Which, lock screen. Which, which ring is it on it? It, it doesn't say, unfortunately. Um, but yes, it's been it's it's incredibly un- unstable and freezes most of the time. Uh, yeah, but the uh, thing is, so um, I, I'm pretty sure that's the build that Gabe said doing going to release because the lock screen yeah. not being yeah. the lock the lock screen is a really big deal for most people. Well, didn't they release a didn't they release a, a desktop version of the operating system where the start menu wasn't working at all? Yeah, one zero one two two. So so, <laughs> so <laughs> Windows eight. Brad Sam's yesterday was like. But the best feature of Windows 10 build 10,130 is the start screen opens. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, it did work for me consistently. I, I, I know this is that. It didn't oh. work for me. Uh, so this is this is the sausage being made, isn't it? We see we're seeing all the very nasty bits. <laughs> I, I had Task Manager opened all the time to restart the File Explorer and fix the start menu. What's me consistently? I really like the way they're going with this. Um, the, in Windows 10, the direction of it, and I'm pretty sure they would they would have it ready by by summer. So, also where it ends well, right? Hmm. Yeah. Although Windows 10 mobile, uh, when will that come out? Traditionally, Microsoft has released it in in, in October. And if I stick to that time, well, you know, it will just be the same as usual. But you know, every year there's, it seems there's a a feeling of increased urgency about, you know, putting up a new version of our system, trying to get things right. What's so, so we'll last, last year it was in April, and last year, last year's new big release was in April. So it's been more than a year since um, the, the last big release. And the, the, mm-hmm. then it was GDR1 in August, I think. Yeah. And well, they are behind. Not released in March. It was launched in February. It was not released or announced. It was released later this month, actually. Yeah. In May, earlier on the HT1 and some other phones that no one cares about. But looking at how buggy this, uh, these um, technical preview builds are, I think there's still a long way to go, clearly. Long way. And to be fair, even the, te- the, the te- technical preview is, is a bit, is not helpful right now because most of the, um, Changes in Windows 10 has to do with the Universal App Store, and mm. without the access to the Universal Apps and the Universal App Store, um, you you can't you can't really get the full benefits of of the software. You're just gonna have a buggy, a really buggy build on your phone, which isn't useful. And speaking of the App Store, um, earlier this week there was um news um the Windows blog announced that they were gonna um change the app app policies because it seems finally someone noticed that there were a lot of App for Google Search apps in the Windows stores, and they decided to do something open about it by um, taking away all the craps and moving them and changing policies so and changing policies so you wouldn't, so you'd get more high quality apps in the store. What do you think of this? I think it's a good decision because there's lots of web wrappers doing nothing on the Windows store. Like they're just craps. And it's, there's so many doubly empower you that. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. Yeah. So I'm, I opened the new plus Ryzen apps in the Windows Store, and 
it looks much better. But the first thing, but one of the things I see is voice calling for WhatsApp. Best got talent. Wi-Fi hacker. Um, Pyro King. Lock your apps app lock. I don't know what that does. Anyway. Gentle alarm clock. Ooh, I guess. That oh, works. that's as good. Okay. So make you bigger. But but yeah no um, there's definitely a quality issue in the Windows Phone Store and 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 getting rid of these apps uh, is going to cause the numbers to go down. But I think Microsoft is working to try and make the uh, the first experience of Windows 10 users a lot better because they hope to expand Windows the Windows Store to billions to a billion new users. And they don't want people to come along and, and, and have a very bad experience when they open the, the Windows Store and find a lot of junk there. No, actually, so, so I really, you really like the old, um, the old way where you'd have to um, wait for a few hours for a human to, for a human being to download, download your app, use it, and say um, yes or no to it, rather than, uh, rather than a computer just going like, okay, it works, it doesn't break things, get, get them. Well, you know the Windows. So only gets about uh, 300 submissions to 500 submissions a day. <laughs> so they need 500 monkeys and they're off. <laughs> well, I guess one person could check up. Well, actually, no, I guess um, a team of, let's say, 50 people could handle this. Let's, let's get the Amazon to Mechanical Turk on. on a <laughs> Although that's probably quite expensive, you know. If you, if you take those 50 people and you, you pay them, say, uh, $3,000, which is really little, actually, three thousand dollars a month. Then what are we talking about? Uh, fifteen thousand, or even more. So it's uh, uh, hundred fifty thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars a a month, and uh, you know, much more than a million a year. Well, that's nothing from from Microsoft. They um they had they use my, my, my that for their dancing surface ads, so they could do that to clean up the app store. That's true. That's true. I mean, it's kind of interesting how apps like POC and Sixdrive are the ones who have to wait to get certified, while the while the latest um non- nonsense app gets in the them gets in like five minutes after the after, after the devs um spits out from whether they they make their apps. It's a bit interesting. And um, <laughs> crap apps aren't only limited, unfortunately, to um, indie devs. There are also apps like Instagram and Tumblr and Google Search, which fit the definition of crap apps that don't really do much. Like the, the Google Search app is basically useless. The, the YouTube app shouldn't exist. The Tumblr app is there YouTube- usable. Yeah, there is a YouTube app. That's just a web app. It's not even a web browser. It's just it oh, just yeah, opens it, the browser. It opens the browser. It does, it's just it literally doesn't do anything. But but you know what? Um, one of the initiatives of uh, that Microsoft announced at Build was a way to make it easier for for web up websites to become applications, isn't it? Yeah, but so, this is different. It's not even a web browser. It's not. It's like just a link. It literally just opens YouTube.com in Internet Explorer. That's what it does. Sure, but that's but that's that's going to be uh, become more prevalent in the future because um, again, like I said, Microsoft is making it easier for developers yeah, to YouTube, turn websites into, into apps. Yeah, but YouTube and Google is not going to do that. Yeah, no, they don't have to, though, do they? <laughs> well, they well according to them, they want to bring the internet to everyone in the world. So except except Windows sure. Windows users. <laughs> no, Windows users aren't people. They're, all, they're, they're robots. No one uses Windows phones. Anyway, um, they bring it to everyone, which means Android and iOS and the web. It's a bit moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving, moving on. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, had a, you had an interesting editorial about the store. Can you explain how Microsoft can break the chicken and egg cycle? Oh, uh, it's pretty. Well, it's pretty simple. It's not. It's not Microsoft. It's like the devs themselves. They have to see it as an opportunity. They have to see it as um. As an opportunity for themselves. Like, if for example, I was, I, um, let's say there's a town, there's, okay, let's say there's London, there's some small town in, um, southern England, and I want to launch a really big store. I want to launch, I want to launch a store for my, um, I want to launch a store for, for something, anyway, a big store. I know that, it, I know that if I were to go to, um, London and launch that same store, I would face competition from like, from M&S, um, other 
large hostels already exist. But if I go to the small town on Montestore, I would get I would get sales from people who are already there, and I and I have a chance of, of building up sales and a rep- and a name for myself. So it makes it makes sense as a developer to launch on the smaller platform first, which has already has a lot of users, than launch on the two big platforms and get and get drawn down, and get drawn out without even having a chance at being visible. Well, um, and I, I agree. Obviously, the the maximum sales potential is lower on Windows Phone. There's just less users. But we've had we saw a number of stories from developers having millions of downloads. It's actually possible to make money on on Windows Phone, and I think Microsoft needs to do more touting the successful developers. They have the stats, and they can communicate with developers, and they can release some statistics. Um, Maybe selectively <laughs> of developers are doing well because I think on all app, on all um, operating systems um, it is a, a bit of a gold rush um, where a few developers make a lot of money and most make little and or none. Um, or none yeah. So so I think it's not it's not <laughs> just honest to say you could make uh, you know five hundred thousand dollars on Windows Phone like this developer. And because I think you can do it on any platform, that's just how it works. Not everyone's going to make a lot of money, but a few can. And if you don't bring your app to that platform, you'll never make the money that's available there. Yeah, so I think like, some marks- like the same, like the same. You miss all shots that you never take. So if you don't, go, if you don't bring your app here, you don't get any, any any money from from it. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you don't play, you you can't win. <laughs> and and if if you play a bad game, you're you're gonna lose. So <laughs> yeah, it's true. You, you do have to put in some effort. And uh, I think uh, VLC recently reported they have half a million downloads. And and I think that's because of their continuing effort to to make the app better. And obviously the app's reputation already. It's it's a, it's a pretty decent app. I don't really use it much because I I rely on, on on streaming media like YouTube and and Xbox Music and Mix Radio. Oh, yes, that's a bad word. <laughs> Um, anyway, I rely on streaming on streaming media like Mix Mix Radio and um, YouTube. So, but it, it it works. It's decent. So the Windows Phone store had a uh, the Windows store had a bug recently, which showed uh, in app purchases. And uh, I think the outcome was pretty, some of the the in app purchases were pretty exorbitant. You know, sixty sixty pounds for for one app or sixty euros for for one in app purchase. I'm sure they're making a lot of money. Well, to be fair, you don't actually have to buy all those, all those um, IEPs unless you're someone who, who can't resist the urge of pressing buy. Did you see that South Park episode where they, uh, the one of Canada? <laughs> I don't know what South Park, but you, you know what South Park? <laughs> no, I know, I know, but I don't watch South Park. Maybe did you see it? Nope. Basically, uh, uh, Canada was uh, bankrupted due to in-app purchases, uh, <laughs> and the developer explained that in-app purchases take advantage of a really small group of people with um, obsessive compulsive tendencies, and 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 that uh, is exploitative. Whereas most people can control themselves, this is a small proportion of people will spend hundreds of dollars on in-app purchases because I mean, the that's, developers that's actually hook them. Um, I think that's because the IAPs are mostly small amounts of money. They're just like, oh, it's um, in your mind you think it's just um, it's just 79p or 99 cents, and then you, then you buy it like 100 times, and you get shocked and it's like, oh, it's actually 79 pounds. How's how does that happen? No, no, there's plenty of them that actually worth that you have to buy for like 99 dollars just straight off, and and I think that in some ways that's exploitative of of the vulnerable people. You know, the ones who can't control themselves for some reason. Um, shall we move on to Unified Store? Yeah, sure. Yeah, That's so uh, Microsoft yesterday launched, like, announced new new updates to the Unified Store, and basically for developers for their payouts. So if you're a Windows developer now, you'll get the a Windows for you get the payout for your Windows apps and Windows Phone apps together, like one single payout. So yeah, what do you guys think? I am a Windows dev, actually. Does that mention that? I, You're not a Windows I signed dev. Up, I signed up a build. I don't know what... I just signed up a build. 
I don't hey. know for, I'm a dev <laughs> tech, tech technically, so I should get paid out for my Mozilla apps. At least I know they've unified. Um, but no, but, but to, be, to be fair, I think it's a uh, I think for apps that offer like um offer like mini really, really fun apps, um it's a good way of it's a good way of um it's a good way of pay, of wooden developers so they don't have to like look into different places. Like next to reader, you can you can um the dev can just go to the store and see he's made um X dollars this month and he gets to pay out for those together. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. In, you know the um in in Windows 10. Microsoft announced at both that Windows payments done through the store could be used for a huge variety of purposes, I think including um, buying things on the web, right? So you can buy physical goods and pay through the Windows store. Also, and yeah, I heard that they're renaming the Windows App Store to Microsoft Store, and basically it's going to be like the Google Play Store, and you're going to be able to get uh, apps, games, products, the Surface 3s and stuff. From the, from yeah. the one store. I so I, I think it actually it would be interesting if it happens. So this little quiet, quiet revolution. Well, it's it's a. Uh, I don't think it's been appreciated the scope of what Microsoft is aiming for. Although, you know, execution is always the issue. But you know, we could see um, if Microsoft's ambition of creating a really really well used Windows Store um, comes to fruition. You could see it challenging people like Amazon, even you know, as a place to easily buy things where you don't have to enter your um, your account details and and uh, you know you authenticate through your Hello uh, camera and you just say give it to me now and it just shows up your door. So um, so <laughs> in that context, just unifying the store is actually a, a small part of a bigger bigger context. Although we haven't seen an analyst write about that yet. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of analysts, um, the, this week we, we saw the, we saw IBC reports and uh, market share gains of Windows Phone this week. Of um, this week, so I forgot what, um, what was it about exactly. Well, well, hypothetical market share gains in the future. <laughs> the IDC. Um, uh, they, they often make these predictions. They very, very infrequently become true. But on this occasion, they they estimate that um, this year, 46 million or around 47 million Windows phones will be shipped, which That's comes to more than 30, more than 10 million more than 10 million a quarter. So uh, I think that Microsoft has a lot of catching up to do this quarter of, um, and next and one after. Well, what we want, if every Phones sold a million. They 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 would easily get that amount. If everyone in Windows Phone sold just just a million, they, they would. Because there's 40, 40 Windows phones in the market. Yeah, yeah. And and then they estimate that um, in the four years time, uh, around uh, 103 million Windows phones will be sold, and that Windows Phone will have increased its market share to 5.4 percent from 3.2 percent. So five. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, fa- fairly modest gains, but uh, in fact, it, they predict that Windows Phone will take market share from from Android and mainly from from uh, Apple, who expects to, who they expect to drop down to fourteen and um, to eighty percent, both of them. But having said that, IDC that's been predicting Windows Phone will outsell the iPhone for ages. It's never happened. I, I do think it's a major disappointment that Microsoft has. Able to achieve it with, with and to be fair, analysts much cheaper handsets. Analysts, analysts always take their um, take their make their predictions based on current trends, which could easily change in the future. You don't we, mm-hmm. we don't really know what's going to happen in the future. So anything you're saying not about four years in the future is basically bunk. It doesn't count. No one should. I mean, well, you can look to, um, you can you, you use it for a guide of where to target your um. Products, I guess, but um, but for for an absolute prediction, it's not, it doesn't work. Yeah. Who knows if Windows One will even be around in four years? Then. <laughs> Get, getting back to the present, Gartner also released some numbers for Q1 2015, and uh, Gartner's numbers are 
for devices sold to end users, not not ship devices. So unlike Microsoft's numbers, I think they said they sold 8.6 million Windows phones in Q1. Of those, Gartner says 8.2 million handsets were sold to end users, which is a pretty pretty good number. Look, and, um, uh, I just saw Black Black Black's numbers right now, and I cringe and I cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at least we're not BlackBerry. We can always say that. At least we're not BlackBerry. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good or, or bad thing. <laughs> but but yeah, so that brings we know response market share down to 5 percent or uh, one in 40 devices well, I don't uh, being sold on Windows phones. I don't understand why 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 sales aren't happening. I mean, why is anyone excited excited for the latest? Um, four four thirty with this, this massive four inch screen, a powerful <laughs> work of processor, and it's um VGA camera in twenty fifteen. Who wouldn't want that? I, I think that's 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 actually uh it's a it's a failure of Microsoft strategy, isn't it? And and they actually at the last results they did say that they expected their low end strategy to deliver better results. And you know maybe hopefully that will mean they they make a change in direction, you know. We have it's seen this interesting that, that they have had more low end devices and yet make less sales. Um, if you compare like emotionally, they have more. Um, before yeah. they had only the 520, which have made lots of sales. Now they have the 530, 35, um, 430, and whatever other phones, and they sell and um, they've sold less. It's interesting oh. to note here that they're talking about on about Windows phones as a whole, while Microsoft's talking about Lumia phones. 8.6, which means that Lumia phones sold more, like, likely 8, 8 million, and the other OEM sold about um, 271,000? Uh, I would say that's probably... I, I wouldn't say that's wrong, no. But but you know what? This year, we finally saw the introduction of cheap uh, 720p devices, and I think consumers may have been waiting for that. Cheap doesn't um, make it had... desirable, though. It does help, but but value for money does though, and and I think these these WVJ handsets are just completely out of tune with where the market was at already last year, and, and the beginning of this year, and, and now these 720p HD handsets should do better. About value for money, um, most most people do tend to think that paying more for a product gives you more value for your money. For mm-hmm. example, like if you buy a cheap product, you it um you could get the um you could you you get something that's useful now. I guess there's no one that's really expensive. It could last you for about um for about years. Like the HTC One M7 could, could still work now in 2015, and it still works well. It still beats out the HTC Desire rubbish that was released last week, or whatever. Um, while the HTC Desire when that was released in 2010 or 2012 would be barely usable right now. So there's that. Um, if you talk about value for money, you can't overlook the power, the staying power of um flagship devices. Which I think is where some readers are starting to say that um, maybe it's time for Microsoft. Maybe Lumia is a similarly damaged brand than than Nokia, and it's time to move on to to a new brand that that like Surface, like Surface that's more high end. Um, but uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see. So um, shall we move on to the apps? Sure. Yeah, Which. Sure. Uh, yeah, so WhatsApp launched the call feature finally. You can now call um, using WhatsApp if you have if you have access to the beta version. It's not really a launch, more like it's more like a um. Test. Well, I know it's coming. So. Yeah, if the, if the testing goes well, it's gonna come soon. 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 <laughs> soon. Trademark. Trademark. <laughs> yeah, in, in the past we. Seen features arrive in a beta app, and it they took months to actually get to consumers. So, hopefully, hopefully this place will go fast, and, and we'll see it sooner rather than later. Well, this is more important because WhatsApp likes to connect people, and mm-hmm. they don't they don't hold back their features from any platform. Cough, cough, <laughs> Google, cough, cough. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you know, that's the thing about being a, a, a messaging app, a connectivity app. If you are not able to reach some of the users. You make your app less valuable, and I hope that having Snapchat will will understand. You know, well, if, if of Snapchat, say one in ten of your friends, 
What's what's about Snapchat? I think um I did you pro demo uh, last week that went through. Um, oh the, yeah. Um the demos um the Lumi specialist um said that Snapchat was coming to win that Snapchat was coming to win this thing, which is um pretty interesting considering that Snapchat um Snapchat support had said the same thing about a, a, week, a week ago, and when he and when he he, he spoke to his peer superior, his superior said the same thing, which is um. I guess interesting because no one's leaked that before, or um, no one's leaked that before. No one's um, I'm still not it before. It's seen as something that's um, it's it's, a, it's like a running joke right now. So it's quite it'll be interesting if it was actually coming, and if you watch Snapchat tweets now, they haven't actually they haven't said that they they aren't making this one up. They said well, they're this one right now. Snapchat deleted their tweet where they said they're working on a, a Windows Phone app. Oh, they're considering one. So, <laughs> so who knows? But uh, but hopefully Snapchat will will arrive. It's it's become a really key app. Um, I think uh, Snapchat CEO said 60% of teens in USA use Snapchat. So so you know there's a massive network effect there, and not having it is is is, is in the same league as not having had Instagram, not having had Vine. Very cool. Uh, no, I don't know about Periscope. Okay, no one uses <laughs> Periscope. No one uses Periscope. Just, just to be fair, only tech bloggers use Periscope to talk to other tech bloggers. Oh, no one uses yet. Periscope. No, there's, a lot, there's, there's a lot of Periscope users. Like 20. <laughs> no, more than that, I think. Okay, 30. 30. Cause, uh, 50. Most people have more than 14,000 views on their each Periscope. No, well, Periscope and America are both apps which are which are popular because they, because the tech we just said they're popular. It's because um the Verge goes like oh Periscope is awesome everyone's using Periscope so everyone uses Periscope but no one really uses it to be fair it's not yeah it's not really a thing. Well, I haven't heard I haven't heard anyone like anyone who's in real life talk to me about Periscope. Yeah, give let's give it a year and, and see, but uh, but it. It doesn't caught on like 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 Snapchat has, for example. It only, you know, the Periscope app. Yeah, it only works with the Chrome browser, and that's it. Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. It doesn't even work on Internet Explorer. So that means if Windows Phone users wants to view a Periscope, they're gone. They need to install Firefox. I mean, Chrome. And as I, as I, as I don't use Chrome or Firefox or Safari, then it's not for me, I guess. So they're just not looking at Windows Phone users. Which is kinda dumb. Oh 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 win oh Windows. Well actually, yeah, half well, actually Windows yeah. users? No Windows actually, I remember them saying oh actually I remember you saying that they said they aren't looking at Windows Phone users right now, but they aren't discounting yeah. it. Yeah, that's what I said. On Twitter. Yeah, they aren't discounting it yet, which is Yeah, but one thing they said is uh let's 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 hear some who uses Windows Phone anyway? That, that's what they said. So they said, who uses it here anyway? Who here uses it yeah, in the industry? Yeah. Which, so, which, which, um, so, which is a good question. It's like asking, um, if someone says, um, but you, well, you haven't done this for, for X, and, and someone goes, oh, do you use X? It is a good question. I mean, for that audience. Yeah, but yeah. you can also tell, you can also tell the um, snobbery, you know, the snobbery they, um, they have in the, um, the, the, the whole Silicon Valley Inbred circle jerky um, environments where they where they mostly um i um, iPhone Apple users and they don't um understand that people use different OSs, mm-hmm. but that was which is probably get apps a lot launched on Android iOS first, despite Android having um the higher market market share. Yeah, because most of the Android like only I think half of the um, Android users are from Asia and stuff. Which yeah. I think that, but I'm not sure. Now moving on to the next topic, that's Quantum integration on OneDrive. Did any of you use it? I just tried it out, and uh, um, it's actually it. pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, I used it and I demoed it on a video, but I think they should change the comment for it. Like OneDrive search for something. I, I most of the time I said Quantum search for this, so I had to record it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It, sh- it should be really. Uh, Cortana search my OneDrive for this or something a bit more natural language. 
much. It's yeah. uh, disappointing um, for that you have to know exactly how to use it. Yeah. Or, or they should just integrate it into Cortana. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll give my app to what the app I, recommendation what? right now because it's, it's, it's for Cortana, for, for OneDrive. And okay. um, it is that you, you can actually use it to search for, for metadata Metadata that's that's not immediately apparent in your in your app, like food descriptions, or in like, your in your like food, for example, or uh, the photo I took in 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 Kent or in Brighton, and it'll actually search your search your OneDrive for recognized pictures, and yeah, and it's, it's, it's really a lot more powerful than you might think. Yeah, and that's my app tip. <laughs> I I suggest use the next gen reader app for the Fiddly client. It's a really, really nice app and it works with all most of the sites. So yeah, use that. And Michael, what's your tip? Um, I suggest uh, I suggest that you use TubeCast Pro um, because it's a really great YouTube app and you can use it to, to cast um to cast um to Chromecast, Chromecast and to Apple TV and Roku. And aside from that, I suggest you use um use all all of t- Thomas Locke's apps by by supporting computers. It's still like apps like like masks, photo room, photo lens, reduce. They're all based around increasing um, quality in your photos, and it's a really it's a really good set of apps have in, you would have you would have on your phone like like Lumia nine nine thirty um ten twenty. It's a really good app, to, really good apps to make your your photos shine. Mm-hmm. TubeCast is a great, it's a great app, and and and, and it's one of where developers doesn't just rely on the on being a good designer and doing a good user interface, but it's technically very sophisticated, and I think that's that's really important. Yeah. Um. So let's move into the next topic. That's Android Microsoft. You mean Android M? No, that's, <laughs> that's Android Microsoft. No, sorry. Yeah. That's T- tell us, tell us about Android Microsoft. Microsoft, uh, maybe. <laughs> so the boot screen is a Windows logo. When you start up, when Android, is it? <laughs> when Android upgrades, it shows uh, powered by Microsoft, and it comes with Office, Cortana, uh, Outlook, all the Microsoft apps, and yeah, it basic it's, it's basically Android Microsoft with Microsoft branding. Okay, I think, I think now you're joking. It's seriously. <laughs> So yeah, my, uh, Google launched Android. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I think uh, we read, we read an article about many of the ideas, the features of, of Android M. There are features that are already present in Windows, Windows Phone, or that are already shown off in Windows 10 Mobile. Yeah, most of them are on Windows 10 Mobile. Uh, you know, one of the most basic ones being uh, having jump lists for your, yeah, like having jump lists for your apps, you know, being able to, to tap on the, having a list no, of apps. Most of them, yes. <laughs> Most, as well. Yeah, I mean, most of the Android users don't, don't like that, so they're probably going to remove it. Really? <laughs> yep. I saw an Android police. No one likes that. Even Marcus, well, you know, even my, Marcus Brownlee was like, they should just remove it on YouTube. Well, I saw the picture of what it looks like. It's pretty ugly. Um, so yeah. the, the implementation is, is, is terrible, so <laughs> no wonder. It's ugly, yeah. I, would, I see that as well. There's lots of white spaces and stuff, and the icons are just too big. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's a pity that, that often Windows Phone is tending towards looking like uh, like Android, because uh, Windows Phone yeah, but we got need, the elegance right from the start. But we need a feature like Doze. Doze is pretty Doze cool, is, isn't it? But Doze is something that's built into Windows Phone, basically, because how apps work with Windows Phone is that they don't run in the ba- in the background in general, so it wouldn't... So what those does is that it makes gives that to Android apps. Android apps. It would be like useful. It would be completely useless on the Windows Phone because Windows Phone already already runs like that. It just it apps someone in the background unless they have to give them notifications. Yeah. So most of the like almost all of the apps have um, notifications. Sure, but but I could imagine. Um, you know, in in the essence, those is taking signals. From the census and using it for something a bit more interesting, right? In this case, you know, idling apps even slower. And and you could see that kind of thing working in, for example, um, taking less background notifications. 
and 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 preserving battery life longer in in, in that way, or or for example, knowing when your phone is in your pocket and not switching a screen on when you get a notification. So I, I hope we do see a bit more of that. I'm pretty sure it really does that. Like, because if, cause if I get a toast, a toast in my pocket, it just vibrates, and and once and once I pull my phone out, it, the screen light lights up. <laughs> so, for example, if it, you could see if Windows takes the same signals from the sensors, if you haven't touched your phone for a long time, the screen shouldn't light up, even if the if the uh, um, proximity sensor isn't active. Mm, true. So. So yeah, like I said, um, it's a neat feature, and, and and you know, it is something that I, I wish was on Windows Phone. Maybe we don't need it as much, but uh, it, it wouldn't be a mess if it's included, also. Okay, now let's skip on to um, five good reasons why Cortana on iOS and Android is a good reason, since you're talking about about. Um, um, let's talk about Android Pay first, I think. Android Pay. Oh, Ma- yeah, yeah, that. that, that Microsoft good. really needs a better wallet. Well, to be fair, you can pay on Microsoft's, but well, it has the ability to pay using NFC. Yeah, it just but... just isn't used. Yeah, that's the thing. But they should rebrand it. I think they're and doing I, it. And I think Android, Android, yeah. Android M is actually Google taking charge of the process, isn't it? I mean, it's just it's, the capability to pay is already in Android. They failed. And this is now Google. Sorry? They failed so many times. Like the first one was yes. Google Checkout, then Google Wallet, and now Android Pay. Yeah, so so now like Apple, they they're taking the direct route and and they implementing the process from one end to the other. You know, working with the banks, working with the retailers, and everything. And uh, which probably also means that this is something that's going to be confined mostly to the U.S. We won't see it in the rest of the world really. Um, so it will probably have limited. Imp- Fact, but U.S. journalists will, will keep touching it as a benefit. <laughs> well, to be yeah. fair, um, here, here in the U.K., we have cons, we have um, cards that, that or you do that. So we don't really need a phone that does that as well because our cards literally just have to, we have already have to, have, have to pay using our cards, about our bank cards. It's just. Mm. But, having, yeah. but having the card on your phone is much easier. Until so someone steals your phone. Um. Yeah. But if you have fingerprints, uh, fingerprint or uh, iris, so that's secure. Well, there's been rumors of Microsoft launching their own Pay service, but you know, very likely, just like Android Pay, uh, it's going to be US only, and it won't have any impact for the rest of the world, where the majority of the Windows Phone users are. So, yeah, I mean, um, most of you must US, most Windows Phone users are in the US by sheer by sheer number. Like, no, no, I think I, I, I think you mean. I think that's a largest country. No, I mean it's got, it's got the highest, highest, um, high, highest number of Windows Phone users per country. So that's the US. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, otherwise, um, I, I think they'll, I think they'll launch the world up in the US and then make it a beta in um, in other countries, just like a Cortana. And it will be done. In I wouldn't be surprised if, if if India has overtaken uh, uh, USA. If Brazil is apparently second. So Brazil is second, and uh, India used to be second. <laughs> so either USA slipped down, or or it's not the first one anymore. There's lots of uh, cheap phones on India, so people are probably getting that instead of getting Windows phones. But I doubt we should, that. We should, yeah, <laughs> I think did Microsoft release some stats, didn't they, with their last um, with their last market? Marketplace update and USA is still consuming most apps, certainly. But China is a close, close second. China? Which is, which, <laughs> China of all places. Which is interesting considering how small, uh, the tiny percentage of the market, uh, Windows Phone has. But it's a, it's a massive market. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now, anyway, as we're moving on to our, I did, I did a couple of pieces of last week. Um, we talked about five reasons why Cortana on iOS and Android is a good reason, and five why it's a disaster. I think I think you would you would I think you would answer this. So um, what what do you think about the Cortana? Not well, I, well, I, I try to be balanced, as as you know. But maybe the disaster tipped off my uh, my thinking in the end. But uh, I try to be balanced as possible, and and of course it's mainly about getting more customers involved in the uh, in the features of Windows, and, and ultimately that might help Windows Phone. 
and and gathering more data, getting more exposure, showing off what Windows and and by extension Windows One can do. And that's all positives by extending uh, Cortana to the other operating systems. But on the on the negative end, um, you, you know, it's going to mean that that will have users moving away from Windows Phone because some of the features that are available uh, that they enjoy on Windows Phone are also now on other operating systems. And r- really, to get the best of Microsoft, you don't have to have a Windows Phone anymore. And they haven't made a good enough case for Windows Phone itself. You know, they, they often claim that Microsoft services are based on Windows Phone, but that's not proven really. So so I think that's, by seeing these features, these, these key features of Windows Phone leaking, to other operating systems, um, the bucket holding Windows Phone's um, unique capabilities is really getting really small. It's funny that you mentioned that, because I was an article like um, five years ago to get user Windows Phone, and I had more readings than that, but I had to take into, uh, into account on um, Windows Phone, Windows Mobile 10, and the apps were going away to um, other platforms, so it, it, became, it became a smaller list over time, to be fair. Yeah. Like, I, I had an article talking about how the user interface was a really, was really well thought well, 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 out and stuff. That was before the Windows 10 mobile um, came out, so that had to be shut. That had to go, just go, go away because it wasn't accurate anymore. I, I think, you know, we, we discussed this earlier, and I think some of the reasons that you've dismissed are really important. Um, things like like cheap handsets. If you're looking for a cheap, reliable phone, then a Nokia Microsoft mobile handset is, is pretty good. And if you're not demanding in terms of apps, and I believe I, I had a statistic yesterday which said that most Android users haven't downloaded an app in the last 30 days. So most Android users aren't very heavy app consumers. Um, you know, if, if all you want is a phone that's reliable and works and, and your phone calls will come through on time and your phone battery will last a day, then a, a Windows phone is a pretty good choice, you know? It so I would to say that that stats could be, isn't exactly accurate because most people get all the apps all at once when they first use the phone. So it doesn't matter, um, so it doesn't matter how, so they don't download more apps afterwards because they get all at, all at one, one big chunk at first. Mm-hmm. But still there. I think it's a, it's a large segment of population, the casual smartphone users, who don't really care about apps, you know, and they use their phones as a, as a feature phone plus, you know. And I, I know quite a few of these people who are on Windows phones, and if you talk about apps, they just, if they have WhatsApp, they're happy. So, so you know, I, I, th- I think those, there's a lot of compelling features about Windows phones which are related to the start screen and are related to live tiles and things like that, um, that still will make a good case for why you would choose the Windows phone over, for example, an Android device, which, which often have reliability issues and, and they tend to slow down. Smartphones can be incredibly frustrating sometimes, and uh, I think Windows phones are less so than, than Android phones over time. Okay, so we're about to round up by now. So we're going to talk about about um about the events in China where like where a Chinese man gang I think was crushed by a wall, but he was saved by his um holding up his Lumia 920 and not, and he and for his luck he was given a Lumia 640 XL, I think <laughs> placements. I find that hilarious. No way. Apparently, some people are not happy about that, but um, but apparently. You know, if he was given, for example, a 930, he wouldn't be able to make use of 4G, you know. And uh, the the 640 XL is, in fact, the newest Windows phone, the newest, highest-end Windows phone available to him. And and uh, unless he had to hang around until the end of the year for the very latest greatest, that was the best Microsoft phone I've ever given him. What is the thing that says... Um, <laughs> It's inside of us, not as good as they should. Actually, I think every single Windows Windows phone since April, since April 25 has been absolutely terrible. Bollocks. Apart from HC 1M8. Um, Snapdragon 410 are the low end of, of the Snapdragons, of the Snapdragons, and they've, and that's what Microsoft has been using, not for audio devices. It's, they're, they're really lazy or they bought a, hu- a huge batch of 
of stamped them for hundred. <laughs> they don't know what to do with them. Well, at, at least I think for a six series handset, the four four hundred is perfectly fine. But six, seven, the, eight, seven, seven better processor. I mean, come on, that's a bit lazy. And that, that's, I think that is the real issue. That's real issue. Yeah. But I think, in summary, since we had a backup look, I think this week has been a relatively good week for Windows Phone. We've had some some interesting apps arrive. We had some the latest the latest version. Android has not been impressive, really. Um, you know, um, things are rolling on okay. And we've had some news about new new devices, which will bring a bit more excitement into the Windows Phone um, community. Um, so let's talk about Microsoft Band 2. So uh, WinFeature uh, posted a new report saying Microsoft is working on the Band 2. There's not much details on it, the price, availability, or some other specs. But they're saying that it's coming later this year, which is kind of expected. So, yeah, Microsoft Band, is two, Band 2 is coming later this year, and that's pretty much it about that. And does anyone here have Windows 10 build 10,130? I'm, I'm still on Windows 8. <laughs> Point one. Yeah, I was trying to download it, but my download, um, I mean, the, it crashes on uh, pre brain to store for the second time. So I'm not going to try anymore. So Windows 10 build 10,130 comes with um, improvements to the start menu, improvements to Cortana, Notification Center. Um, there's improvements to Edge, and you can now update runtimes for Windows uh, using the store beta update app. And Microsoft also updated the music app, which now has a dark theme, and the video app got renamed to Movies and TV. So that's pretty much it for the Windows 10 build 10,130. I think that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this um, podcast. If you want to follow us, you can follow Suru and Double Empower User at Double Empower User on Twitter. You can follow Michael at M K E A L L I S O N. And you can follow me at M E H E D I H underscore. And you can also subscribe to the podcast on Pocket Cast, and you can also find us on the default Windows podcast app. Just search for Dublin Power Zone, and we should be there. So, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Make sure to tune in next time, and yeah. Bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.